Hyvä idea. Hey guys, welcome back. Hey. Another video. Uh, this time we're going to be doing, well, we're trying to cover our solar install. Uh, we've got a few things that we're going to do, modifications. Got a Y tie uh, brake controller to install. Got to do a 50 amp Anderson on the Everest. Bit of 3D printing. Bit of 3D printing. Um, so yeah, we'll take you through the journey. We've, I've decided to give it a go. Me and my mate are going to do the install. Um, haven't found the money tree yet, so got to try and do these things for myself, and also it'll help in the future for fault finding. I'll know where to look, or, you know, give yeah. me a base to where to look anyway. So yeah, a few uh, a few mistakes here and there, but you know it's part of the journey. So <laughs> we gave it a crack. Um, so yeah, we'll, let's get into it. Just splicing into the. Into the trailer loom. Just splicing into the mainframe. The main <laughs> belt to hack the system. Anyway, I know for a fact that a white crayon will fix that problem if it's wrong. <laughs> what sort of dickhead are you? Because he thinks a, he has Lloyd Luck. A realistic one? That's what. Lloyd Luck. Lloyd Luck. Luck. When you get the sh all the things with the missing parts. Yeah, that's me, mate. Oh, you got the Harley curse. <laughs> that's what we call the Harley curse right here. <laughs> You're lucky too, like me. Kookaburras are laughing at us. They think it's a great joke. Drill the hole. <laughs> good? It's already got one, it's leaking. Just do another one. Oh, uh, I'm drilling. Yep. Ah, wrong spot. Oh, stop! That just that came, that came up right beside my hole. I'm just gonna have a look and see because uh, we'll probably be right. We'll just that's actually anyway. quite a panel too. That's foam in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Because I was looking at it, looking at the bottom of this and then inside, and you can see it's a, like a 50 mil or 40 mil panel. Definitely fits through the top nicely. It goes through from the bottom up. Yeah, it's just hooked. There we go. Get all the way down. How much you want out? Ah, uh, not that much for now, mate. It's a big fat white black. That's your power feed to your fridge from your Anderson. Oh, yeah. What's that? You have to name your caravan. It's a lentil pod. It's a lentil pod. No. <laughs> Still splicing. Yeah. Why'd you bring the truck around? Because uh, we're close. Which one's the socket number two, one, two, three, four. Are you just holding it? No, I was. Push it, just push it. Oh, you got your back legs up. Is it armed? I was going to say, adjust it. Maybe try and just drop the front of it. Oh, I can't go any lower. They are testing the Wi Fi security system. Oh, oh there we go. Brakes have locked. Sirens going. What was that? <laughs> they got a little wee distance before it locked. I think it needed that shunt from acceleration. Oh, yeah. Once you got going, it just seems to give you the big jam up. That'd be scary. <laughs> well, good. Brakes work. Towed the van for the first time. Success. Happy. Happy. Even the white tie alarm worked which is good. So we've got everything wired up properly because I can push my little button here 
and the caravan brakes come on at 80 percent obviously i can adjust that so all the wireless wire tie systems working good Is it going to plan? Okay. What's happening here? Right, um, measuring the discs or rotors, see if we can machine them rather than replace them. Because they still look pretty fat. So. so I haven't been braking too hard? No, you have. Because <laughs> you've worn out the pads. <laughs> That's what they're made for. So what have you found? Uh, they should be all good until the next service. Brakes and rotors? Brakes and rotors, pads and rotors are all good. So 5,000 Ks is the next service, so we'll do them all then. <laughs> no bad. <laughs> She's all the way back. You can trim the bumper, I suppose, but then I don't think you get past the tow bar. You follow the line. Just this far. little corner here. Might be doing some trimming. Don't damage my car. <laughs> Panel time, fun. <laughs> I've been sitting in the caravan doing some work, and I can start hearing some power tool noises. So uh, the boys have got the truck in the shed again today, and they are doing a little bit of amputation on the spare wheel where the spare wheel goes up underneath the car because the, the new tires that we got are too big to fit in the factory hole so let's go and see what they're up to um so i'm trying to see if our almost 33 inch tire fits in the uh, original hole might have trimmed some small pieces off. These used to be a part of my vehicle, which are now lying on the floor. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't want to get a different size spare because then if you change it, your diffs won't argue very much. I can't afford a new diff. <laughs> I think I might have to do is reroute the trailer plug, but grand scheme of things. Oh, my girl. Yeah, so the trailer plug's getting a bit of a hiding, but we can reroute that. What? I just had to reroute the trailer wire. Because I know nothing about wiring. I've got all these little tags on there telling me where they go. <laughs> 134, 134 Newton meters. Yep. What's this other one? 134, nah, go all the ones <laughs> have just spent the last, uh, what, about two hours? Yeah, about two hours. Yeah, with the guys from Amptron, um, who are really awesome, and we've sat down with them and gone through our possible solar setup, literally listed out every single appliance that we wanted to use, 
I think the first calculation was a bit crazy because we yeah, included... First, first calculation, we needed 2,000 watts of solar, so... <laughs> oh, that's for the air fryer and the air conditioning to be running and all that stuff, but realistically, you know, we can't have everything we want. Um, so, yeah, we came up with pretty decent, not a compromise, but just a way of living off-grid, you know, because obviously we're not going to be off-grid all the time. And uh, we, uh, what, what are we doing now? We're heading back to our, we were parked up the van and um, Chris has to measure the roof. I'll do a scale drawing of the roof, see how much maximum solar we can get up there. And, and then, uh, yeah. water, water, what are, the, what are we getting? We're getting the battery, what, two? Two, batteries? we're getting, so we're going for 400 amp hours of lithium. Uh, two 200 amp hour batteries, uh, 3000 watt uh, inverter charger, so it's a AC charger combined with the inverter, auto switch over. But the reason we were getting two, two, two batteries, eh, because they had a 400 amp hour battery and we decided to go with two 200 amp hour batteries, so if there ever is an issue, we have a backup battery. A little bit of redundancy there, we can disconnect one if it has a problem or... Anyway, that's the thought. <laughs> and then there was some sort of DC something charging? Yeah, so two 30 amp DC to DC. Um, so we can really pump some power in there if we have to from the car and uh, solar blankets. And also your uh, MPPT, so your solar controller. So once again, amazing service from Amtron. Uh, we sat with, like we said, with Frick for about two hours and um, Kevin and Chris were there as well. So yeah, amazing service and thanks guys. Need a bigger ute. <laughs> when are you gonna buy me an F truck? One day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I could bought one. Ooh, look at that. Instructions are out. <laughs> <laughs> Things are getting tricky, eh? We don't like these instructions because there's no pictures. <laughs> We've been learning. Our minds have been blown. <laughs> Three times over. Today the boys have backed the caravan back into the shed and they are looking at the solar system. So just before Christmas we purchased um, panels, uh, inverter, and some batteries and some other crap that I don't know what it is, uh, but basically to create us a system that we can go completely off grid, still be able to live and work. And today is the day where they are ripping the caravan apart, chasing all the wires, and um, yes, yeah, making a start on something that will probably take a couple of days. So uh, I will try and capture bits along the way so you can see what they're up to. Oh lord. The destruction begin. Comes around. Can't see much down there. Yeah, I don't reckon you will. I reckon it's just gonna be in those big in the underneath the sink. How's it get there? 
it's going to run down behind that fridge somewhere and it'd be straight at the bottom. So it's been about three hours and I've just come to see where they've got to. As you can see the caravan's looking like it's been in some sort of earthquake. Under the bed they have laid out all the products and they're obviously not going to stay there but just seeing how things fit and I think my shoes are not going to be there for much longer. Interesting. It's day two of the installation of our solar system. So this morning the guys were getting a little bit frustrated while they were trying to trace all the wires in the van and they pulled all the panels that were inside and outside and everything's basically ripped apart. But after lunch it looks like they're making a bit of progress and uh, they have started mounting some of the uh, elements under the bed. So yeah, it's starting to come together. What's happening? I'm trying to clear away so we can run my new cables up to the circuit board. There's lots of silicon. Is it going to plan? Mostly. Got the old solar panel off. So under the bed we've removed the original uh, AC DC charger and the original solar controller and we're going to put all our new stuff in that's where our solar controller is going to go and all our power rungs can come up and nicely loop under there are we still enjoying the process? this part's way more fun starting to hook up the inverter to the battery might start laying out the solar panels later construction to finish install today. <laughs> Getting close. This looks awesome. Very close. That's going to be your DC DCs. That's going to be your solar regulator which we'll put in. Which we'll get wired in. Testing the DC DCs. 60 amps. So we're currently putting in 43 and a half amps. It says there the van's actually drawing a bit of power, so it's actually putting in 51 amps at the moment from the two DC to DCs. Just keeping an eye on them, checking them on the um, infrared camera, just making sure the heat isn't getting too high on them or any of the cables. That's its main power feed through there, so. Oh. Just checking things out. We, um, we needed some bus bars, and it's Christmas, so everything's shut. So we decided to 3D print some bus bars as well. Um, we 3D printed the base, set the aluminium bar in there, and all that points. modifying the lid design on CAD at the moment and reprint them just so they're a little bit stronger and then we'll have some covered bus bars for free. <laughs> plugs on the outside of the van so we 3d printed up these little cases put the Anderson plug in there screw it to the side of the van it's got a little lentil logo on there and a negative positive positive negative so yeah it makes things a bit tidier and it looks cool
structure, monitors out in Verda. Can mo I monitor the MPPT as well, but I haven't, we haven't got the right cable for that. We'll, we'll probably buy that and install it, but it's, it, the inverter's not hooked up, so it's not showing any watts or anything. But then it'll show us how much AC power we're using once the inverter's running. So, and the um, MPPT and the DC-DCs are both Bluetooth, so we can get the app on your phone anyway and see what's going on. Cool. We are in day four. Day four? Day four of our uh, solar install. Yesterday we finished up pretty much all the 12 volt inside DC DCs. All the batteries were installed yesterday. Um, all the bus bars, everything installed. Today we're finishing off solar panels, we've got all them stuck down, we've just got to do all the wiring and all the conduit on the roof. Um, what else? Just starting to move the uh, ship to shore plug, we'll get that put in and then Sparky can come wire that up to the inverter. That's it for today, I'd say. The big question, will you get finished today? No. <laughs> <laughs> You would not believe. Have a look through it. Right? Have a look through it. Yeah. You would not believe what is right there. Like, I'm talking. Oh my god. Can you see it? Okay. Come, and have, come and have a look. <laughs> Seriously, come and have a look. Can tell. Was it almost a big mistake? Yeah. Almost. Water. Oh, the hot water? Almost cooked it. Have a look in there. Tell me we're not sitting. It's in there. It's just silicon. Is it? Yeah. It's not a cable. I know. It looks like cable. It's just silicon. Feel it. Are you sure? Feel it. Oh my god. It's <laughs> I was like, are you it's just like the two foot. It looks exactly like that cable there. Yeah. I thought we'd just about hit 240 cable. Turns out it's just a big bunch of silicon. <laughs> we're not plugged in anyway, we're safe. Some, um, power cables for our Hang on. two Anderson plugs. Yeah, cut it there, mate. Cut it there? Yep. Oh, no. The uh, technique. Yeah. This is the first of our um, Anderson plugs. 
adapters that we 3D printed. That we put on here. It looks pretty neat. <laughs> Once I get all the silicon off it. <laughs> Day five of the solar panel install and last night the guys got all the panels on the roof and they ran the wires down and it's all connected under the bed. So today we they are going to pull it out of the shed and check that everything is working and that the power has been collected. Um, last night we had everything on charge, the batteries are now fully charged. So um, we've just got everything running inside the shed at the moment just to drain them back a bit so that we can see the um, charge coming in from the solar once it hits the sun. And um, yeah, we had a bit of excitement this morning. I um, started up the coffee machine and they were sitting under the bed watching all the elements and we had some smoke. So the caravan smells a little bit crispy right now. 26% battery. We're currently drawing seven amps, just over seven amps. So keep that in mind when we go out and the panels go into the sun. Whatever it turns to in positive, it's gonna be plus those seven amps. What went wrong that time? Just gross incompetence pretty much, Hans. <laughs> 12 wires up there, that's a lot of combinations, right? <laughs> yeah, hey, there's only one working combination, <laughs> and I've missed it 11 times, so... <laughs> Should be all in the sun there, mate. It's just gone into positive. Putting in 12 amps, 15. What will it get up to? Not sure, that's what we're testing. Sure. Okay, we finally had power coming from solar. So now they're just going back in one more time just to reconnect the stuff that they unconnected the first time that was actually correct. And then we should be good to roll. <laughs> what happened? What just happened? Uh, we've got a loose connection. Got a bit hot. <laughs> so that's 21 amps going in at the moment. Is that what we expected? No, it should be more than that. Does that mean that one of the panels isn't working? Yeah, I'll hop up and just check all the connections. Make Might. sure everything's good. I think we've got a faulty panel. Yeah. I think. We know. I think. We know we've got a faulty panel. Got a faulty panel. So, trying to figure out why it's faulty. He's doing some faulty, investigations. Oh, 
Um, we're just looking at a bit of ventilation. Trying to take the temperature away from under the bed. And there's a little bit like around the top when the bed's shut, but when the batteries are working hard, they get pretty warm, so. See what we can do. We're trying to, we don't want to go through the floor because then obviously dust will come in, but the front boot seals are pretty good. So we're going to put a fan blowing, drawing the hot air out into the front boot. See how it works, doesn't work. Block the hole back up. We've got this little computer fan that my mate had in his shed. Well, he's got a heap of them, but just going to use this one. We just did a test on it. Does 65 CFMs, so there's not a lot of area under here, so it'll move a fair bit of air. Uh, it wasn't too loud either, so we're just gonna put that there. See how it goes, put it on a little switch so we can turn it on and off in case the humming upsets the wahini. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just gonna stick it here close to the bow board there, it's easy to tap into. And yeah, we'll run it, probably put the switch over this side. See how it goes. If we need more, we can put in another one. But I think it'll be okay. No wires through the back? It'll go from Bit tight. A bit tight in there. It's not very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you live off lentils or you wouldn't fit in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> that seems to be working. Let's see how it goes with the heat. So, finished the solar install. Well, all the bits and pieces are all finished. So, uh, head inside and have a look. So, most of the fun stuff's under the bed. So, we'll jump under there and have a look at uh, the way we laid it out, the install, and yeah, see how we went. Um, so starting over here, we've got a MPPT controller. Uh, it's a 150 volt 70 amp MPPT controller. Uh, we've got a thousand watts of solar on the roof via semi-flexible panels. Um, we went with semi-flexible mainly for the weight. They're like a third of the weight of the glass. They're apparently not as efficient, but so far they've been good for us. They don't like the heat much, but I don't think any of them do got two 200 amp hour lithium batteries from Amptron. Uh, they're wired in parallel for to can maintain the 12 volt. 
And we got a 3000 watt inverter. Uh, that's an inverter charger, so it has an automatic switch over when it senses the 240 input. Uh, we, wired, we wired in the fuse block so that it didn't have a million connections on the batteries. And we put in a little fan just to pull the warm air out of out of this area when the inverter is working in the heat it does get quite warm especially when you're pulling 150 amps out when the aircon's running during uh, install it was over christmas so we could we there wasn't much access to to shops and things so we made all these brackets oh my mate made them all out of aluminium and they hold everything in bracket for the inverter bracket for the batteries there's another packer over the side there to stop them stop them moving around 3d printed up um, some bus bars so these got a wee cover that clip on there you clip it off and all your connections are under there during the uh, install when we we're doing our high amp draw tests we did a lot of high amp draw tests just to make sure nothing got hot something got hot <laughs> one of the connections on our positive bus bar was loose so it created a wee, wee smoke signal but sorted that out pretty quick and it was all good uh, apart from that it's working really well so as part of the system the MPPT controller and the smart shunt are both Bluetooth. So this is our MPPT live running at the moment. So it's 460 watts. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon and we've got a few trees around so there's a bit of shade. So it's not full doing its full thing but it's putting in 33 amps. And uh, that's our graph for the month. Maxed out at four kilowatt hours for the day. Thought that was pretty good. And the smart shunt as well, that's that's Bluetooth as well. So this is uh, basically a live view of, of all the current draws that's coming out. So we haven't got a lot running at the moment, but we're putting in 28 amps into the battery. 81% state of charge. So those are pretty cool. I have them going all the time. I like watching all the numbers. Um, at the front in the control panel, we've got, uh, it's a hardwired panel. So there's a, a um, Cat5 cable that runs back to the inverter. And this is all your AC loads. So every time you plug something in, it'll show you a draw, current draw on there. It's pretty cool because we can turn the inverter on and off from that as well so we don't have to lift the bed and flick it off. So that's been really good. Uh, we'll head outside and see a few bits and pieces out there. So outside, this is where our ship to shore, the original ship to shore was. Uh, we moved that to the front to be closer to the inverter and we custom 3D printed this Anderson plug holder. So it's got our little lentil logo on there positive negative and tucked up in there is a is an Anderson plug and that that can be used for a, um, accessories or you can put a, a solar blanket in there as well as long as it's got its own solar controller it, it can go straight in there now this is where we move the ship to shore so we move that to the front we also put a, a second Anderson plug at the front for the same thing. There's also another one of these on the other side, so we've got plenty of plugs. Okay, so on the roof we've got six 170 watt uh, semi flexible solar panels. We've wired them three lots of two, so they're in series. Um, just helps with volt drop and shading and, and whatnot. So far it seems to be working pretty good. So that was our setup, quick run through of our setup. Um, boys at Amtron were really good. They, they designed it for us. They took all the, 
the uses that we gave them and they put it in a spreadsheet and it spat out what we would need. Uh, they recommended all the best products that they could get their hands on and uh, so far it's been really awesome. That uh, Victron gear is fantastic stuff. Uh, we're not sponsored or anything like that, it's just what we were, what we bought. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching this episode. Uh, like and subscribe to the videos if you want to keep watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.